You are holy and blameless before the Lord because of who you are in the Spirit. That is good news, folks. But unless you believe it, it's not going to do you any good. You have to believe this stuff. You have to say, yes, I hear it, I understand it, and I'm just going to go ahead and believe it. Like, what have you got to lose? Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free with the Sheriff's Daughter. My name is Julianne Harris and I have been arrested by God's goodness, His grace, His love, and His mercy. And I've been set free from fear and pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life. I've been set free from. And a special shout out to my dad in Northeastern Montana who is a sheriff there. So yes, I am a sheriff's daughter. So I'm so glad you're tuning in today. It is April the 18th in the year of our Lord, 2021. Man, it is a good time to be alive. And there's a reason why it's a good time. Because some of y'all might be thinking, no, it's not really a good time to be alive right now. <laughs> but trust me, it is. Why? Because you are a new creation. You have a new identity. You have a truth about yourself now. If you've been watching my videos thus far, you have some things planted in your heart that if you choose to believe them and you uh, go over them and meditate on them, uh, it will change your life. And then you'll understand why it's so good to be alive today. Praise God. So, you know, I had a whole long series of this is who you are. And it was probably the last 20 some videos uh, that I've diligently went through covering who you are. And this is foundational, you guys. We have to see ourselves for the things that I shared with you in all those videos. Uh, we really do, we have to see ourselves that way. And until we do, we won't really see lasting life change. You know, we can try to change in our own strength and our own ability and it'll never last. It might work for a while, but it'll never last. And if you don't believe me, then you can look at, you know, the majority of people at the beginning of the year who make these New Year's resolutions of like losing weight or going to the gym. And I think it's like by February or March, it's a really high percentage. Don't even go to the gym anymore. Like it's when you try to do things, when you try to make change in and of your own effort, it won't last. And so I'm here to tell you today that if you listen to the last 20 some videos, understanding who you are in Christ Jesus, and that's just a tip of the iceberg of the truths that are in the word of God regarding who you are. If you listen to that and you start to believe it, just take one and just meditate on it. Um, it will change your life. Then the next stage is I wouldn't say it's the next stage. You, it could be one or the other that you're doing first, but I'm gonna cover today. I'm gonna uh, s tell you um, another truth that God revealed to me about how right I am with him and his purpose. And guess what? The purpose for my life is the same purpose for your life. We all have a unique purpose as far as what we do, where we go, our sphere of influence, but we do have a common purpose as well. And so I'm gonna start sharing that with you today and I know you're gonna be abundantly blessed. This will set you free from fear, anxiety, discontentment, and all that stuff that we always project in the future. You know, Jesus was very clear in the word when he's like, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worry of its own. And he knew that that's how we operate. That's how we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to stress about tomorrow and the things that we don't know about and uh, whether or not it's all going to work out okay. So I'm here to tell you today that the message I'm going to share with you is going to help you be set free from that. So um, to give you a little groundwork of this, it was when I was in Bible school and it was towards the, it was sometime in my second year. I was really stressed about what I'm called to do. Like, God, what do you want me to do? Um, and in the first year of Bible school, 
uh, one of the instructors, Barry Bennett, he was talking about if you want revelation from the word, if you want to know what your ho what your calling is and all this stuff, he said, why don't you just pray this prayer over yourself? And it's the Ephesians 1 prayer. And so it's Ephesians 1 verses 17 through 20. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to spend the next few episodes covering with you is this uh, piece of scripture because this is what I did. I printed it out, I made it personal, so I added my name in there and I claimed it for my own and I taped it on the inside of my closet door. So every time I would open my closet door every morning, there it was, big and bold, and then I would say it over myself. This is something practical that you can do. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in messes or in a depressed attitude or status and all we have to do is speak the word over ourselves, but we don't do it. Sometimes it seems to be the hardest thing to do when you're in the middle of something and it is your answer. It, it seems so non-laborious, but at times when you're in the middle of something, it seems really laborious. So I did this faithfully every day. And, and if I would think of it, I would do it throughout the day, and then I would pray in the Spirit. I would pray the perfect will of God. Praying in the Spirit is the perfect will of God for your life. And so even though you can't understand it, um, your Spirit is praying the perfect will of God for you. And, and so anyways, let's not get sidetracked. This is the Ephesians 1 prayer, so let me read it, oh, let me read it for you right quick so it says that the lord verse uh ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 that the lord or that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him mm. The eyes, verse 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know and he's saying that you may know three different things. Number one, the hope of his calling. Number two, um, and what it what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And number three, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in heavenly places. You know, um, let's just start with that first verse. I might not even get into everything I was wanting to get into today, but I'm here to tell you that in this first verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You guys, this is the first step to everything. You know, I've been focusing a lot about, on about what your identity is. And that is so vitally important. How you see yourself. Proverbs tells us, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. How you see yourself will determine how you live, how you act, how you behave. You know, if you have a child that you're just like, you're nothing but a, a hellion and a brat and a little monster. Did you know that child is going to start seeing themselves that way and they will live that way. <laughs> Because that's how they see themselves in their heart. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. And vice versa. If, if you're telling your child you are created with a purpose and a plan, you are a giver, you're not a, 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 a taker, uh, you share with your siblings, you, you love your siblings, you don't, you don't, you know, you're not a hitter, you, you speak words of life over your child. And, and he hears those and listen, that's how we form who we are. That's why I took such a long time trying to show you from the word of God and repeat over and over and over again, the things that you are, because it's planting seeds of a vision of who you are. Cause as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, you know, for so many years, um, from a very young age, I thought being a party girl or being a partier, uh, a drinker, whatever, I thought that that was cool. And so I began to see myself as such. Even before I really was doing it that much, it was like, I want to be a party girl. And, and it wasn't something that I said out loud. It wasn't something 
that I strived for. It was just something that I took on. Now listen, I believe that God created me to be a party girl, but for the kingdom of God. To have uh, the personality that I have, um, my I laugh really easy. All this stuff was created to bring glory to God and to live and dwell in the freedom that I have in Christ Jesus. Uh, but this is what the enemy does. He'll take your original purpose and your original plan and he'll tweak it and he'll pervert it. You know, when, when your purpose, for me example, I, I was created to be a party girl. I was created to be a fun, free spirit. For the kingdom of God but what the enemy did is he took that purpose and and personality and he took it towards darkness which was party girl for the devil <laughs> really <laughs> and so that he could steal kill and destroy in my life and that's what happened I uh, suffered death in every area of my life for a cup over a couple of decades you guys that's that's what's happening in the world today. You know, you look at these people that are, uh, we look at them and we're like, you're so off track and you're so bad. And listen, everything as they run full force towards darkness, their personality traits, their passion, their everything that makes them them was created to bring glory to God. But somehow the enemy has gotten in there and tweaked their identity and how they see themselves. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, it's, it's now they're running for darkness. And they're using everything God created them for, for bad instead of for good. So I've spent a long time talking about your identity and how you see yourself. And I would encourage you, don't let that stuff go. Find in the word, when you read the word, find what the word says about you. Something that God highlights to you and you claim it and you receive it and you stand with it. You say, yes, I am accepted in the beloved. Praise God. Uh, I don't want to get back into that list because I'll never get out of it, obviously. Because <laughs> identity is so huge. But here's another thing that is super huge that we can glean from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. He says, in the no that you might get revelation in the knowledge uh, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him of who who is him of God you know the word tells us that all things that pertain unto life and godliness are through the knowledge of God you guys this is so vital and we we sometimes poo-poo it or we just skim past it and be like, yeah, I know who God is. No, you really don't. Because if you aren't living the fullness of the life that Jesus died for you to have, then you don't know God like you should. And, and this is what, it, it's like the beginning stages. It's like a domino effect of everything falling into place is once we can understand who God is, all things pertaining unto life, and godliness all things that word all mean in the Greek means all you know we sometimes think well you know God and my relationship with God you know we put it in a box over here but then when it comes to work and family and all this stuff um, this is another box over here <clears throat> and God never intended it that way he wanted it all to be blended together with him in the dead center of everything you know, there's this song, and I love it. It's it's called Jesus uh, is the center of it all. That's not what it's called, but that's what the words are. And that's what the original intent was always to be. And God is love. Um, I've, I've spent lots of weeks ministering on that, and it never gets old. It never gets old. So it's the wisdom and the revelation of God that then leads us to know what our purpose is, what our inheritance is, what the inheritance actually is, what uh, the hope of our calling, our purpose, um, and the exceeding great power that's in us, in Christ Jesus. You know, it's all through the knowledge of God. Here's, here's the deal, you guys. I really want you to just maybe chew on that this week, is that we have to be real with ourselves 
as far as what we're believing about God. You know, religion has painted God in a really bad picture. I, I look at my, take my dad, for example. My dad is a sheriff in northeastern Montana. Now, if, you know, you have the, the people that continually are getting in trouble, continually breaking the law, continually doing this stuff that my dad has to deal with on a continual basis. Um, and those people, if you were to talk to them, they would probably give you a completely skewed image of who my dad is. Now listen, my dad deals with everybody with a lot of grace and love, <laughs> unlike any other sheriff that I know of. Uh, but in the same, in, in that fashion, see, they don't know uh, the father, my father, that is love, that is witty, that is funny, that has a great sense of humor, that likes laughing and joking. And he's like one of the best storytellers I've ever met. That's, that's the dad I know, that there's a tenderness in him for the things of God. There's a tenderness in him for his children and for his family. And, and his value system is impeccable. But see, somebody that he's constantly having to deal with in a negative context, they aren't going to see that side of him. Listen, I know there's a lot of people in, um, in the county, in the town where he's sheriff, that they know him as Sheriff um, Harris, but they don't really know him. They, and, and I know this because they were like, yeah, I saw your dad and, and he said the funniest thing. And I was just taken back by it. And it's like, wow, you really, you really don't know who he is because my dad's a storyteller. He's, he's humorous, he's comical, he's amazing. And if you only know him in one context, then that's what you judge the whole man as. Likewise, our heavenly father, a lot of y'all have maybe been raised in church or maybe you're just new to church and you've encountered religion that paints God in a certain in a certain light that is simply not the fullness of who God is. Because if we had a revelation of who God is, then we would have answers to everything pertaining to life and godliness. If you find yourself stuck in depression, stuck in uh, perpetual sin, if you find yourself stuck in these areas, it's not a problem with that specifically, it's a problem with your knowledge of who God is. You guys, this is profound. And, and the majority of people don't place the same amount of the appropriate amount of value on knowing who God truly is. Because God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How many of you all can even sit and think and go, yeah, I think God is a rewarder. If you've encountered religion and if you've <laughs> endured some bad teaching about God's character, you won't believe that God's a rewarder. And no, instead, you think he's like a, a, a godfather instead of God the Father. <laughs> You're going to think he's like, as long as you shape up and do right, then maybe I'll give you something. And, and that that is even hard for some people. They think more like, if, if you shape up and you do right and you do everything that I think you should be doing, then maybe I won't take things from you. Maybe I won't put a sickness on you. You see, this is what religion has done, is painted God in a completely wrong picture. And, like, and just like when I'm talking about my dad and, you know, somebody always going through bad things and, and always having to deal with my dad in a negative context, they aren't going to see the love and the tender heart that is my dad. Likewise, when, you, when you're going to a religious church or if you've allowed these religious mindsets to come in and you go through stuff and most of the time, and I would say all the time, it's not God punishing you, but religion will say it is. Meanwhile, it's either, you know, straight up just natural consequences that come from the stupid mistakes that you chose to do. <laughs> and religion will come in. So say, for example, you decide to drive home drunk 
and you get pulled over. You get a ticket because you're driving drunk. You broke the law. And now you got a ticket, your license gets taken away from you. If you, you know, all this bad stuff that comes from the decision and then you'll go to church and people will be like, well, see, that's God punishing you. You shouldn't have done that. You know better. You shouldn't even be drinking. So God punished you by, you know, having you get pulled over. No, that's a lie. That is a lie. God is not punishing you. It's a natural consequence of your decisions. We got to stop blaming God for everything that is not him. And if you're blaming God for uh, maybe a death in the family, if you're blaming God for uh, a sickness that is in your life, then you do not have a correct understanding of who God truly is. And it is affecting everything in your life. It isn't your problems that are the problems. It's your belief and your belief specifically about who God is that is messing up your life left and right. But you know what? There's good news. So do you want to know what the good news is? The good news is, is that you can choose to believe differently. You can choose to embrace the truth of the word of God. And what does the word of God say about who God truly is? God is not a, uh, a harsh dictator. He isn't a godfather that, you know, will only protect you if you pay your dues, um, will then take stuff out on you if you don't pay your dues or if you don't behave the way you think he wants you to behave. This is all just a religious mindset. And so let's look at um, who God truly is. And if you choose to believe this, you guys, you can be free from whatever has you feeling bound in your life. It's not, it's not difficult whatsoever. So in 1 John chapter 4, it says a couple of times here, um, but I just want to say in verse um, 8, 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for he is, for God is love. You see, if you're, if you're a born again Christian and you don't have a compassionate love for those around you, you don't understand that God is love. It doesn't mean that you're not born again. It's, it means that you truly just don't know who God is. And, and maybe you've heard it, but you haven't chose to believe it. Uh, you know, in, in 2 Peter verse 1, uh, 2 Peter actually verse 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace and peace is multiplied to you, not by acting right, not by doing everything correctly, not by going to church, not by paying your tithe. Grace and peace comes from knowing God. But if you don't know who he truly is, then there is no grace and peace in your life. You know, it, it's just taking it back to this example with my dad. If, if you're always breaking the law and getting in trouble, and that's the only kind of dealings that you have with my dad, there's no grace and peace when you see him. <laughs> it just brings up nothing but bad feelings when you see him. And that's not truly who he is. But yet this is how you guys deal with God sometimes. This is very, very important. It's not, um, it's not all the stuff that you're stuck in. It's the, the fact that you aren't believing the right things about the true nature of God. God is love, you guys. It's not a feeling that comes and goes. I know I've, I've taught a whole lot about this a while, a long time ago. But I feel like somebody watching today, you need to know that you know that God is not punishing you. He's not judging you. He put all judgment for sin in the body of Jesus on the cross 2,000 years ago. All judgment for all sin went into the body of Jesus. And a lot of us, we want to take judgment on ourselves. We, we condemn ourselves. We're upset with ourselves. We know the bad things that we've done and we feel like we have to pay for it. But see, that's what the grace of God encompasses 
It's by grace that you're saved through faith. You have to put your faith, your expectation, your belief in the fact that, you know what? God is not judging me anymore for that. So I'm going to stop judging myself for it. You guys need to cut yourself a piece of forgiveness pie (laughs) and eat it. And then after you eat that piece of forgiveness pie, then you need to cut yourself another piece of forgiveness pie because guess what? (laughs) It's not going to be long before you mess up again in whatever area and you got to forgive yourself because listen, God forgave you. He's already forgiven you. Why are you holding things against yourself that God isn't holding against you? This is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus paid for all of it so that you can walk free from guilt and punishment and shame. Now it will, that's your vertical relationship with God. It will affect your horizontal relationships. Not everyone around you is going to be happy with you, but God is. And that isn't God punishing you, having some relationship go flat because of some stupid thing that you did and you hurt this person. And so now your relationship is, is you know, torn apart. That's not God punishing you. That's just a natural consequence when you hurt somebody and when you do something contrary to love to somebody. So let's get back to, to understanding and contemplating and, and once we can really grasp how much God loves us, then we can understand our calling, uh, what inheritance is, and, and the rest of this prayer. So Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Let's do a reset on what we believe our knowledge of God is. And then I'm going to have to uh, continue down this road next week with you all about, um, about what your calling is, what all of our calling is, and it's going to set you free. But I feel like I, I just know somebody today needed to hear that God loves you and you don't have a money problem. You don't have a health problem. You don't have a sin problem. You have a belief problem. You are not believing correctly in who God is. Listen, God heals. He's already healed you 2,000 years ago. But if you don't believe that that God heals, if you don't believe in healing, then you're not going to experience healing. You see, it's not a problem on God's end. It's a belief problem. If you have a problem in your finances, God's already given you all provision for everything he wants you to do. And if you are not seeing breakthrough in your provisions and and in your money, it's not a money problem. It's a belief problem because you're not believing God to bless you, to exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think, pay for your bills. It's a belief problem, folks. And, and this is my prayer for you this week, is that God would give unto you the spirit of revelation and knowledge in who he is. You guys focus on that, meditate on that. If it's anything, if you have a belief about God that's anything contrary to unconditional, unshakable, unmovable love for you, then you have a belief problem. If you feel like you're stuck in a sin that you just can't get free from, at the core of it is you believe that God is upset with you because of that. It's a belief problem. That's it. And and praise God. (laughs) I pray that you are going to be set free this week as you you meditate on this and as you ask God to reveal it to you. This is good news. And I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He's not changing his mind about you. He is love. That's who he is. He can't do anything but love you. So I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you subscribe and hit the little bell, you will get a notification every single time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can just plan on a new video every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. 
I would encourage you too to share this. If it blessed you, it's bound to bless somebody else. <laughs> and chances are, as you're listening, sometimes we think of specific people. We're like, ooh, I think they should hear this. So share it. Uh, why not? Uh, you can also find me on Facebook at Arrested and Free. You can send me a message there. You can follow me there. You can also send me a text message at seven or 970 uh, 919-0459. And I would love to hear from you. Thank you to those of you that post comments and send me encouraging messages. Uh, you are why I do this program. So I appreciate you all. Have a great week. And I'm just believing that you are going to have an aha, praise God moment as you understand and you have a deeper revelation of who God is and how much he truly loves you. God is good, you guys. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.